as far as the ground zero situation in Bengaluru is concerned because heavy rain continued to lash the city on Monday morning, flooding several roads and inundating the basements of a few apartments. In fact, visuals of the concerning road conditions have taken over social media, triggering netizens to slam the IT hub's infrastructure. A handicapped woman uh, fell into a puddle formed due to rainwater collecting inside a pothole. In fact, the JDS slammed the Congress government over the incident, saying that while Siddharamaya and DK Shukumar keep patting themselves on the back for the visionary governance, the city's crumbling infrastructure is doing all the talking. Local residents are staging protests, demanding appropriate changes in roads in Vartur. This is close to the area where the handicapped woman fell down. Meanwhile, two suspected, two kids are suspected, beg your pardon, to have drowned in Kengeri Lake. Search and rescue efforts have been halted due to the incessant rain, but has now resumed. All right, that is the latest as far as this is concerned. Unfortunately, this is not the first time we're looking at a situation where uh, Bengaluru has been brought to its knees quite literally. You're looking at visuals from several parts, that is. I'm given to understand Deepak Bopanna, my colleague, is joining us. In fact, he has been um, getting us those ground reports. Uh, Deepak, very good morning. Clearly, you are reporting from Tata Nangar is what I'm given to understand. And it's absolutely unfortunate to be looking at the kind of visuals. In fact, as I see you stand there to be reporting, we can look at how the situations on ground zero, Deepak. Yes, and it's not getting any better. I've been here now for the last three to four hours and uh, the water is receding very, very slowly. And hmm. people who have been uh, hoping that the water recedes, they make their way to the, uh, out of their homes, don't have choices at this point in time because the uh, uh, only hope that they have is either get into some really heavy vehicles, there are some tractors operating, and then the fire department is operating using their inflatable boats. So they have gone into surrounding areas. They're looking at uh, people who are stranded, who need essentials. We just spoke to a few people who are taking uh, back uh, essential items, like especially food at this point in time, because many of them have moved to the first floor, who didn't have an option, have moved out of this area. I spoke to an individual, an elderly man a while ago. He has moved from Badra layout where his house is, and he has come here hoping to find shelter in his daughter's home, thinking it will not flood here, but now you can see this uh, con condition of this road. He had to be brought here in a boat. The fire department has been working here, the BBMP working in multiple areas, but because of the amount of water that there is all around, for people it's becoming extremely difficult to make their way out. Traffic has been completely brought to a standstill in and around, uh, you know, Sakar Nagar, Vidya Ranapura, uh, you know, Hebal and surrounding areas, very slow moving uh, right now. We're also told the situation is bad around uh, Yalahanka as well. So northern part of Bengaluru badly hit. The other side is Sarjapur Road, uh, you know, Vartur, Belandur, where these kind of areas as well have received a lot of rainfall. We've been told that low-lying areas, they're still, you know, badly hit. There are teams of the NDRF as well who are working on the spot. And it's not a common sight for you to see on the streets of Bengaluru, boats that are operating. And it's uh, not a welcome sight mm. for people, of course, who have been struggling. Uh, and uh, even now, as we speak, my video journalist, you know, losing his footing there. And that's the kind of terrain that we are managing in. But imagine for the people who are living in these areas, uh, how difficult it is, not able to get out of their homes, no electricity for the last 14 hours now, no food. And there are relatives who are trying to reach them, but, you know, wading through knee-level water. Right, Deepak, uh, thank you for getting us uh, the ground zero situation, which is about really unfortunate as far as that is concerned, given what citizens have to go through. But uh, for the moment, we leave the conversation at that. Taking those points to Neha, my colleague. Uh, Neha, we heard what Deepak had to say. We're looking at these visuals. In fact, he was pointing out how it's not just where he's reporting from, including North Bengaluru, also witnessing that. And also in terms of rain, what we're looking at, the Whitefield Corridor. But that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of this is an unfortunate incident that did transpire in Kengeri Lake, Neha, where you're reporting from. Give us a quick sense of the rescue operations have resumed and what's the latest that we do know on that front. Well, yes, Nivedna, it's been about three hours now since the rescue operations, you know, began here from about eight this morning. We've been seeing teams of the fire safety and emergency services pressed into action at the Kengiri Lake. Very unfortunate incident where two young children, all of 11 and 13, are feared to have drowned. In
in this lake. In fact, you know, further intensifying their operations right now. The fire services team currently are, in fact, you know, deploying all kind of equipment over here to try and gauge a sense of where these two children's, you know, in fact, uh, mortal remains might be. What is, of course, crucial at this point is to note that, you know, this equipment that you see over here is generally deployed at bore wells to try and ascertain the depth of the bore wells. Now that is in fact, you know, further being deployed over here into the lake as well, where you see that you have in fact, you know, teams of the civil defense and also of course of the fire services here that are pressed into action. They've been with this boat now, they've in fact, you know, been using that graft hook as well for quite a little bit of a distance over here. The biggest challenge that they continue to face is the fact that there is a lot of hyacinth and silt that's in fact, you know, uh, that, that's in fact, you know, settled towards the bottom of the lake, making it extremely difficult now for them to even be able to hook or to grasp onto something to possibly, you know, further their operations. These that we showed you earlier, in fact, you know, this equipment that uh, was here is essentially trying to give the personnel, the rescue personnel over here, a sense of what could be happening under the water. It's giving them that extra vision, those extra eyes that they need at this point to try and, you know, of course, ascertain uh, where it could really be. What is, of course, you know, crucial at this point is that it's really quite unfortunate. The manner in which, you know, in fact, these two children who were reportedly playing here just at the lake bed, you know, you can, in fact, still see that it's only because of continuous rains that even now, you know, this is, of course, quite slippery here, to say the least. And the fact is that these two young children who possibly, you know, descended a little closer to the water there to try and collect some water to continue playing and that's when this mishap has happened. Of course, we'll stay plugged here until such time that, you know, they are able to make some headway over here with the search operations, but truly quite a tragic story here and the rains, you know, not really sparing anybody in Bengaluru city. Right, Neha, thank you for getting us the latest as far as this unfortunate